So actually, uh, what we're going to be doing here is just building a little bit on the proxy charm. Uh, sorry, it's okay? Okay, sorry. Uh, building a bit on the proxy charm idea, but rather than writing um, your commands using SSH to get into the machine, we'll show how you can use Ansible to do it instead. <coughs> sorry. Um, so there's um, you know, a, a number of different ways of doing these things, but... Um, so uh, based upon what we know from the previous... Um, session that you just went through. I'm just going to go through a little bit of a review of what we did with the proxy charms and then um, and then show how, how you interact with Ansible after that. So the first thing is when writing any of these charms, this is a pattern. I am not telling you this is the one and only one way of doing things. Um, Charms being a, a reactive way of programming, you're just putting together some little segments of code, which gets called back at certain, no, oh, sorry, which gets called back at certain times. And, um, you know, you're, you're, you're able to do things at different points. So this is just a, a sort of a guideline to, to follow. You can use this as a start. This is not, you know, any definitive way. There's no right or wrong way of doing things. So um, going back to what we had before with the metadata, we can see here that I am giving it a particular name called Ansible. This name is going to be used later on. So we're taking note of where the names are. And at the, you know, partway through this, I'm going to sort of show how all these names tie together and how everything fits together. Um, the layer YAML, this right now in version 604 that we're all using as part of this HackFest, um, the app layer doesn't actually work. So um, when, once we get into sort of, you know, playing around with this, uh, I figured out another way of being able to use this. Uh, unfortunately, there was an upstream change in um, Juju in the app layer which became incompatible with us uh, at the last minute, literally. So um, I wanted to be able to show how you could use the app layer to install arbitrary um, PPAs as well, because I wanted to show, you know, oh, well, we'll use Ansible 2.6 as an example. But um, for, for, for today in, in this release, we won't actually be using the app layer. Uh, the config YAML, um, in the example that you'll be given is actually empty, but this is a way of being able to show how you can install arbitrary packages from different PPAs, or you know if you've got a specific version that you want to install, you can do it that way through this app layer. Okay, back to the Ansible side of things. The actions.yaml is a you know, you've seen that before. Um, this one, I'm using the exact same concept of, you know, create a file. So we're just doing something very simple. And in this case here, I'm just calling my action playbook. Again, we'll take note of this name because it's going to become important later. Um, inside of the reactive, so when we get called back by um, Juju, when it's ready for us to um, execute, it's going to call us back with this actions playbook, which is the name from the action that we had before saying, okay, we're ready to execute this. And what I'm actually doing is I'm pulling a variable out from the environment to know what Ansible playbook you want to execute. And I'm just calling that variable script. So later on inside of the um, uh, VNFD, where we're describing the various uh, you know, config primitives that can happen, the initial primitives and the, and the day two primitives, um, we specify a variable called script with a value of the name of the Ansible playbook you want to run. So that way you can have different primitives execute different playbooks. Um, so here it is inside the VNFD. You can see here the name, uh, sorry, first of all, the charm itself is called Ansible. 
the name of the primitive is playbook, which is corresponds to the action file that we created. And here, the script is going to be touch file, and that's basically a file called touchfile.yaml, which is the Ansible playbook that will be executed. We can also pass variables through to the Ansible scripts to run, and that's just arbitrary, you know, name of the variable, value of the variable, name of the variable, value of the variable. So you can specify as many different variables as you want for your Ansible playbook to execute. So far, this looks pretty similar to the um, SSH version that you were doing. Um, so it's not too much of a stretch. And here is that big picture of how all the names tie together. I could have just simply called everything, you know, Ansible or Playbook, but then you would kind of look at it and go, well, you're calling it Playbook here, and you're calling it Playbook there, how are these things related? So that's why I specifically, you know, use different names for all of these different things to try and help keep it clear. So inside the VNFD, inside the Juju Charm section, I'm calling it Ansible, which has to match what the metadata says. The action, you know, the, the, the sequence two inside of here has a name called playbook, and that matches what's in actions and what gets called back in the reactive. The parameters, I've got a name called script, and then it's going to look that up from the um, environment of, of the charm that's being executed to say, okay, well, get me the name of the script. And then that will be looked up to find, okay, where is touchfile.yaml? Let's call Ansible Playbook, you know, run this file. So, um, this, you know, actions playbook, the previous session that we looked at with the proxy charm, this is actually the exact same code. We don't need to change anything in here in order to be able to execute Ansible instead of SSH. However, when it actually comes time to implement the action, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we pull the variables out of the Juju charm environment and put them into a, a, an array of variables that we're going to pass off to Ansible to execute. The unfortunate thing is, as far as I can tell with charm programming, there is no get me all the variables in the action. So uh, in this case here, I actually, I actually have to you know, provide an array of the variables that I want to pull out. So if I wanted, you know, um, file name and contents and owner all to be variables, I would have to literally go, you know, for a name in, file name, comma, owner, comma, contents, and then I could pass those off to um, Ansible. So that's the reason why I'm actually putting this in, in a loop, even though there's just the one there. But you'd be able to grab multiple, um, multiple values, variables, out of the environment and pass it off to um, Ansible when it's time for it to execute. And lastly, here's where we're you know, looking up the value of script. And I'm saying, OK, you know, append the script name and .yaml along with the variables and execute that um, as a playbook. Um, yes, one additional little file, uh, a helper called libansible.py. Um, this is something that we added to the, uh, to, to, to the um, so there's actually uh, in DevOps, there's a generator package, which will generate these templates for you if you want. Um, and this live Ansible Pi is, is you really don't need to touch it or modify it. You still want to do most of your work in the action. Um, sorry, in the, yeah, in the action file here where you're pulling the variables out. Um, so here, this is going to be sort of a standard template library. And what we're doing is we're setting up the Ansible hosts file inside the container where the charm is running because that's where your playbook is going to be executing from. And we're saying, okay, well, you know, the Ansible SSH user is this. If you've chosen to use an Ansible, uh, sorry, an SSH password, we'll pass that through. 
or we're also telling it by default um, to use the private key of Juju SSH proxy. Because we already have a public private key pair inside of the um, uh, proxy charm, we can just leverage that and tell Ansible, go ahead and use that, and we don't have to worry about a username and password. Well, we still need to worry about the username, but we won't need to worry about a password. So we can leverage the existing key pair um, to do passwordless SSH for Ansible. Um, here as well where, is where we specify the interpreter, the target interpreter that's going to be used. Uh, for, for Ubuntu um, cloud images, by default, we ha you have Python 3 installed. If your target um, operating system happens to be CentOS, you're probably going to need to change that to Python from Python 3 because the default interpreter that comes with CentOS is Python 2. So this is the reason why when you look in here, you can decide, okay, well, you know, what Python version is on my target host? Because Ansible needs to know that. And then we're just setting up uh, uh, some little uh, additional um, uh, information here for um, helping to debug. We're creating a log file and that sort of thing. So that, again, is pretty standard stuff that you won't need to touch. And remember earlier, there was the call to execute playbook in the, going back here to implement the action. We've got this execute playbook. What that one does is it actually just looks for the playbook file inside of the charm um, and uh, basically executes, you know, Ansible playbook on that file so you don't need to worry about where the path is for it. It'll just find it for you. And converts that dictionary of key value pairs for the environment to an Ansible command line that will pass off and then Ansible will go ahead and run the playbook for you. Um, and finally, the actual playbook itself. Um, if you're not familiar with Ansible, this may look a little bit odd. Um, but, uh, so basically inside of Ansible, you have a whole bunch of, oops, sorry, a whole bunch of built in, um, tasks that you can do. So one of them is a standard library from Ansible that's called create file. And it basically, you know, takes a file argument with a path and what you want done with that file. You know, it could be like state. Um, present or state absent, or is it removed? I can't recall off the top of my head, which allows you to delete a file if you need to. There are other um, Ansible you know, tasks that are built in. Anything from replace the contents of this file, you know, a, a sed like replace where you're going to be replacing a particular line based on a pattern or um, there's a MySQL library that comes with Ansible where you can just say, create a MySQL user, create a database, create a table. Um, so there's, it, it's, it's got quite a, a rich set of things that you can do with it. But all we're doing in here is simply creating the file. And the way variables work inside of Ansible is they follow um, a template language called Jinja. Um, and that uses you know, two curly braces, the variable you want replaced, and two closed curly braces. And that, again, matches the variable that we're putting in through the actions.yaml. Lastly, I've created a little build script. So um, you recall before with you know, creating the, exporting the Juju repository, charms, and build directory, um, I started doing things a little bit differently with my uh, VNF packages because I had a bad habit of losing my source code. So what I'm actually doing is I am creating a subdirectory in the VNFD called charm sources. And that's where I'm keeping all the sources for the charm. And then the build directory goes directly into the VNFD as well. So that way you don't sit in a different directory where you keep all of your charm source code and you build it and then you copy it into the VNFD afterwards. This kind of keeps everything all together. Again, this is not a prescription. You know, 
this is not the way you have to do it. This is just something that I found to be relatively useful. And so I just, you know, go into that charm um, layer, build it, um, create the tar files for it. Uh, <laughs> Because I tend to do iterative development, I um, you know, will typically have the previous version already present in my OSM, so I execute you know, the deletes of them and then create them. So that way, um, any time I make a change to a charm um, source, I just go ahead and rerun this, and it you know, rebuilds all the charm packages for me, rebuilds the uh, VNFD tar GZ, the NSD tar GZ, deletes the old versions, uploads the new versions, and off we go. So um, I can go through a, a sort of quick demo of this, and as well, um, due to the nature of the last minute changes that we had to do, I uh, put this source code for you to play with in the temp directory of the host that you guys have been currently playing with. So if you take a look in slash temp, you will find there is a Hackfest Ansible tar GZ file, and you can just unzip that into your home directory and everything will be there for you to play around with. Okay, so um, I'm on the same um, common server uh, for the Hackfest that everybody's been using. So if we take a look here in the temp directory, we can see, there it is, Hackfest Ansible tar gz so you can just pull that into your home directory and, and unzip it you'll um, have this you know hackfest ansible directory as i'm showing here and right inside of here is the build sh the one thing that you're going to want to do is change the vim account name to match the vim account that you created for yourself so in my case, OSM Vim list. Um, I created, uh, because I was working on VNF onboarding before, I created myself a um, Vim name called VNF OB for VNF onboarding. And so that's why uh, that's what I have here. Um, sorry, the other thing that I didn't uh, mention was the params YAML file. And here is where we pass through the file name that we want, as well if you want to set a password for the target VM. So, uh, yeah. So here is that uh, build script that I mentioned. And that's actually what I'm going to be running through just to... Uh, just to show the demo. So what this does is it, you know, CDs in there and does the charm build for me. So this just takes a few moments for the charm to fully build. But any changes that I make to the charm source code um, will automatically be, you know, built and, and put into the um, uh, layer directory right in the VNF. So all I have to do once it's done building or all the script does is simply tars it up so that it's uh, available for uh, the OSM VNF uh, D create command and NSD create command. Okay, and there we go. It did the NS create and um, did the juju switch for me automatically as well. So if I take a look uh, with juju status command now, I can see that it's already switched to the right model. And I can see, you know, the, 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 the uh, LXE containers being created for me. If we take a look back at the um, OSM web UI, we can see here, okay, it's in an init state, it's, you know, creating the, uh, creating the, um, the NSD for us. Uh, the one thing, um, I don't know uh, if you guys have seen the juju debug log command before, um, but there you basically can see it's going through and, you know, downloading 
all of the um, packages for update. This is basically uh, the Juju uh, machine starting up. Um, another way of seeing this is you could actually do, uh, if we go back to Juju status command here, we can see, okay, there is, you know, a machine zero that's up and running. So if you haven't uh, seen this before, you can actually SSH into that container. And so now that I'm inside of here, I can take a look at the log files as they're happening. Um, if there's something wrong with the playbook, I can actually rerun it right from inside of here once the, you know, once the VM has been deployed. So um, the log files are owned by root. So the first thing I usually do whenever I go into a container is switch to root. And then I can do a tail of var log juju unit something or other. This uh, unit file name matches the NS descriptor. So uh, you, you'll find that it's a, it's a fairly large file name that gets generated. So here we can see the same thing as the juju debug log, but um, you know, I'm just inside the container right now, so I can watch it run that way. Um, okay, so there's, there's a going around, it's finishing installing everything. And now we should be in a state where OSM is yes deploying the uh, VM inside of the um, open inside of OpenStack. So going over to the white cloud, my horizon view here, I can see that the VM is being created. Oh, and it's actually up and running. So now if we go back here, okay, so it's it's waiting for the SSH to be alive. And actually, what I'll do while we're waiting for that, our, oh, I can never remember where it goes, but um, find our touch. So there it is. So the playbook YAML file that was inside of the uh, descriptor, that way, you know, the, 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 the playbook itself, actually gets copied inside of the LXC container. And we can actually uh, see uh, what it looks like. So you can just see, oh, there's the contents of my playbook file. So handy little, you know, debugging, playing around trick. Say I had put a, a syntax error or something in this YAML uh, file for Ansible, and when it went to run, it, you know, broke right away saying, oh, you know, syntax error, or, you know, uh, the playbook execution failed. I can actually just, in because I SSH into this container, I can actually just VI this file and then rerun the playbook until I get it right, and then fix it in the original sources and rebuild, rather than always, you know, doing the full build cycle over and over again. So being able to SSH into the container is a great way of being able to sort of, you know, interactively explore what's happening inside of, um, you know, inside of the environment. Um, going back to this log, Okay, so here we can see that the playbook, there it is, um, the, uh, the script actually ran. It said, okay, this is the playbook that I'm going to run. Here is the command that I'm running. And lastly, here is the result of executing that. And if we take a look uh, inside cat var log ansible log, Remember in the um, lib helpers, we said we're going to be logging everything to var lib ansible.log, or sorry, var log. So this here is where it is, and you can see the actual ansible. Again, if you're not familiar with ansible, this looks a little weird, but this is a typical ansible, ansible output, where it basically says, okay, I am doing, 
you know, I'm, I'm executing this script for you. And yes, something did change. Um, the destination, this file was created. And it comes back and says, okay, I executed two things for you. One thing changed and nothing failed. So that's basically what Ansible says. So if we were to go back to this log out of here, um, oh, here's the IP address. So I should be able to SSH into my VM now. And uh, actually, I'm familiar with it, SSH Ubuntu. Uh, yes, I want to continue connecting. And here I can take a look in the temp directory and there's the file that I sent for it to create. So it almost looks like, oh, well, really all you did was exactly what we did in the proxy charm. You know, it seems a lot more complicated to be able to do that than what you did in a proxy charm. But once you start getting into more advanced things like, well, there's this line in this file and I want to do a pattern match where, you know, it says um, bind address equals and I want to put in the IP address rather than the wildcard or I want to put in 127.001 or whatever it is. Once you start getting into uh, more advanced things like file manipulation, um, installing packages, all that sort of stuff, Ansible becomes a lot more easy to use versus SSHing and trying to, you know, figure out sense scripts to make things work for you. So um, that's that's basically it um, for you know uh, the difference between an SSH proxy and an SSH uh, uh, proxy charm that uh, uses Ansible on top of that SSH layer. Um, I'll leave you guys to play around with that because I think we've got like 10 minutes until lunch and uh, yeah, enjoy. <laughs>